Hi everyone, hope you are doing well. Today we are going to do the permanent mandibular lateral incisors. But before starting permanent mandibular lateral incisors, I highly recommend you to see our videos on the permanent mandibular central incisor first. So the permanent mandibular lateral incisor is the second tooth from the midline. So this, these teeth this is the central incisor, this is the central incisor of the right side, this is of the left side. So these are the permanent mandibular lateral incisor, this one and this. This is the right side and this is the lateral incisor of the left side. So these teeth emerge into the oral cavity at the age of 7 to 8 years and the root completion is at the age of 10 years. So these teeth, the mandibular lateral incisors, are distal to the central incisors and mesial to the canine. The mandibular lateral incisors, they are larger in size as compared to the mandibular central incisors. These are the two mandibular lateral incisors. This one is the mandibular lateral incisor of the right side and this is the mandibular lateral incisor of the left side. Mandibular lateral incisor is wider mesiodistally if you compare it with the diameter of the mandibular central incisor. The tooth is more asymmetrical in shape. It means the right, the mesial and the distal surfaces are not very equal or very similar in shape. The mesioincisal angle is more sharp as compared to the distal incisal angle. So this one is the distal incisal angle that is relatively round. The mesial outline of the crown is straight while the distal outline is convex. So this is the mesial outline that is straight while the distal outline is convex. The labial surface of this tooth is smooth. If you see it closely the labial surface is smooth with no developmental depressions as compared to the, to the maxillary lateral incisor which has developmental depressions. There are few developmental depressions but they are present near the cervical area. In this area there will be few developmental depressions. The root of this tooth is narrower mesiodistally. So root is thin as compared to the other incisors especially the upper lateral incisor. The root is thin mesiodistally and it may curve slightly in a distal direction as you can see here. So the root is not straight, it has a slight curvature in a distal direction. The incisal edge has a slope from the mesial towards the distal side the cingulum of the lateral incisor is small and it is present slightly towards the distal side. Because of these two reasons, the mesial marginal wedge is longer as compared to the distal marginal wedge. The lingual fossa is shallower and it is without the presence of any developmental groove. The root is slightly narrower. The mesiodistal width of the root is narrower on the lingual side. Therefore, you can see part of the distal side and part of the mesial side from the lingual aspect. The mesial side of the crown is longer as compared to the distal side because of the slope of the incisal edge towards the distal side. So cervical line. That is towards the, the curvature is towards the incisor ridge. The incisor ridge is in line with the root apex. So it is in line with the root apex. The surface of the root on the mesial side is smooth with no prominent developmental depression. This is the distal side. The distal side of the crown is shorter as compared to the mesial side as already described. There is a prominent developmental depression on the distal side. You can see this is the developmental depression. Sometimes the roots are referred as ribbon shape for the mandibular incisors 
because you can see the mesiodistal width is less as compared to the labiolingual width which is more the incisal edge is not straight it follows the curvature of the mandibular dental arch due to the curvature of the incisal edge and inclination of the crown more of the labial surface is visible as compared to the lingual surface the cingulum is located distally